Good afternoon. Today we're talking about the autumn statement. It's been such a chaotic time in the government. Um, the tax rules keep coming and going and, and I for one have been totally confused about what the tax rules are going to be going forward. So I was really interested to see the Jeremy Hunt's um, autumn statement to hopefully get some clarification. Um, it came across a backdrop, didn't it, of rising energy prices, um, interest rate rises, the cost of living crisis, the war in Ukraine, uh, the government announcing a 50 billion pound black hole in the in the public finances. So I was really interested to see, you know, get some clarification about what the tax rules are going to be like going forward. Um, today is a, uh, a run through of some of the financial planning um, that you can do to arrange your finances in the most tax efficient way. Um, if anything jumps out at you, uh, we're quite happy to answer questions or have an exploratory meeting with yourself to see if anything is, uh, is right for you. But let's go through some of the highlights really of the autumn statement as it was announced. So first of all, all tax thresholds and bans were fixed for at least another, well, another six years. So um, that was income tax, capital gains, inheritance tax, VAT, all fixed for at least another six years. So that means that there's going to be a lot more people paying a lot more tax, really through stealth tax over the next uh, few years as asset prices, as incomes rise over the next few years because of inflation. So that's really bad news over the next few years for people that don't like paying tax. Um, allowances, tax allowances have been reduced heavily. So income tax, the threshold by which you have to pay additional tax has decreased from 150,000 of earnings down to 125,000. So you only have to be earning over 125,140 pounds now to pay the very punitive 45% tax rate. Um, and everything else has been, all the other thresholds have been fixed, as I said, all the way up to 2028. The dividend allowance, the 2,000 pounds of dividends that you can get tax free, that's going to be reduced in April 23 down to 1,000 pounds and then reduced again by another 500 pounds down to just 500 pounds in April 24. And the capital gains allowance, the amount of gain that you can have on a disposable asset um, has reduced from 12,000 pounds down to 6,000 in April 23 and then reduced again down to £3,000 in April 24. So um, not much good news really. I mean, the only really good news was pensions remained untouched. So pension relief, tax relief remained untouched. And also the state benefits, the state pension uh, was protected by the triple lock guarantee. So state pensions will increase uh, next April by 10.1% the CPI value in September, as will other state benefits. Um, so not a lot of great news. It, it was expected that tax, ro tax uh, rates would rise and we were going to all have to pay more tax to fill the, fill the black hole. But what can we do? Uh, what can we do is in retirement? What can we do in later life? to plan our financial affairs as tax efficiently as possible. So I'm going to run through a few of the taxes now and just see if there's anything that kind of can help you in your situation. So first of all, let's look at income tax. So as I said, the, the earnings by which you'll have to pay additional rate tax now drops down to 125,140 from 150,000. All the other thresholds remain fixed for at least another six years. So a lot more people are going to be paying higher rate tax and additional rate tax over the next few years. So the first thing I would say would be maximize your pension contributions, especially, you know, if you're coming up to retirement, um, they didn't touch pension tax relief. So any pension contributions that you make attract complete 100% tax income tax relief, which is really valuable and still one of the best investments that you can make. Um, so 40% uh, tax relief for uh, higher rate taxpayers, 45% tax relief 
for um, additional rate taxpayers, which is really valuable. Um, just remember that you've got your £40,000 per year um, allowance, so you can put up to £40,000 to get the tax relief. And if you didn't use the previous three years allowances, you can carry forward your £40,000 um, forward to this year if you didn't use previous year's allowances. So definitely maximise your pension contributions if you can. Um, bring income into this tax year because all of these changes are uh, going to start in April 23. It means that if you can in any way control your income and bring it forward into this tax year, that could be a uh, efficient way of taking your income, uh, especially as they're becoming thresholds are becoming more punitive from April of next year. Don't forget gift aid. So any gifts that you're making to charity, um, make sure you tick that box and get full tax relief on any investments or any gifts that you're making to charity. Don't forget to arrange your holdings to fully utilise all allowances. And that's especially the case if you're a married couple where potentially one spouse is a non taxpayer or doesn't pay as much tax as the other. Make sure that you're arranging your assets, your portfolios, your investments in such a way that you're using everybody's allowances and everybody's um, lower tax bands. Remember to max out the good old ISA. It's been around decades, but we can, you get £20,000 completely tax free for your ISAs, and it remains a really effective way of getting money into a tax free environment, whether that's an investment portfolio or cash savings. Just make sure that you get, you use your £20,000 per year ISA allowance. And just consider another couple of types of investments. So you've got um, investment bonds, which are non-income producing. So you can have a portfolio of shares, investments, stocks and shares, but have them wrapped in an investment bond wrapper. And that means the investment bond itself is not producing income and dividends and interest, um, which basically means that the investment bond itself won't be subject to the potentially punitive ongoing dividend and interest tax on that portfolio. Um, and don't forget VCTs, although venture capital trusts, although would be considered a higher investment risk product, the tax advantages are 30% income tax relief on any investment that you make. And don't forget that any dividends are usually tax free. So um, if, if that's of interest, don't hesitate to get in touch because that's a really tax efficient way of investing. Let's focus on dividends. So I'm sure a lot of you will have investment portfolios, shares um, that pay out dividend income. So currently there's £2,000 of dividend allowance per person where you don't have to pay any tax on those dividends. But they, as I said, they are reducing that dividend allowance down to £1,000 in April of next year and then down to just £500 in April 2024. So um, it makes it even more important to use those allowances as much as you can. Arrange the investment portfolio so that you're using the allowance. Um, spread the holdings across uh, spouses to, to ensure that you're getting those allowances. And just make sure that if you've got any investment portfolios or investment holdings that are not in an ISA, to get those transferred into an ISA each tax year. You get £20,000 each tax year. Um, and by having the investments in an ISA, that means that they are tax free uh, forever. So that's, that's really useful to do. Um, and as I said before, it, consider investment bonds. So you can have your portfolio in an investment bond and because an investment bond is a non-income producing asset, then you're not going to be subject to these ongoing tax charges, um, any dividends or gains, they're all subject to uh, the investment bond itself. So, so definitely consider investment bonds. Let's think about capital gains. So capital gains is where you sell a a uh, property or an asset or investment and at the moment you can make a gain or a chargeable gain of £12,000 before you have to pay capital gains tax. 
As I said, they are reducing that uh, annual exemption down from 12,000 down to 6,000 in April, and then down to up just 3,000 um, pounds in April, 2023. So, you know, what can you do to plan around that? So maybe if you're considering selling a property or a portfolio that could be subject to capital gains tax, um, maybe bring that decision forward to this tax year because at the moment, the annual exemption is 12,000, um, but that's reducing next tax year. So maybe bring those sales forward to this tax year. Um, equally, if you're looking to make any gifts to children or grandchildren of assets or properties that are subject to capital gains tax, maybe bring those decisions and those gifts forward again uh, to this tax year. Just make use of that annual exemption. It is the most under, underutilized um, exemption, the annual capital gains exemption. Um, maybe phase disposals over two tax years, sell some of an asset this tax year, more of the asset next tax year. And remember to use the um, allowances of both husband and wife. So there's no capital gains on gifts between husband and wife. So if you're thinking of selling an asset, transfer an asset to your spouse and get both of you to sell that asset. And effectively, then you get double the annual exemption, capital gains tax exemption. Um, EIS VCTs, so EIS, Enterprise Investment Scheme, VCT, Venture Capital Trust. These are, well, I guess the most tax efficient investments. You know, we're getting income tax relief at 30%. We've got um, dividends, uh, no tax on dividends, inheritance tax free, um, capital gains tax free. Basically, these are um, investments which the government really want you to invest in to boost the UK economy. And therefore, there's huge tax incentives to invest in these types of products. They tend to be for people who have already explored all the, all the basic planning around pensions and ISAs and investment bonds. Um, but if you're in that world um, and you're looking for something to do in a really tax efficient way, then definitely get in touch and take advice on, the, on these. Um, they're not appropriate for everyone, um, but definitely something to consider just purely for their tax advantages. Inheritance tax. So, they have fixed the thresholds uh, yet again, the 325,000 that everybody gets of assets that are, are not taxed for inheritance tax. That's been fixed for another uh, six years till 2028. Um, that nil rate band has actually been fixed since 2009. And because asset prices are rising over time, it means that more and more people uh, states are going to be subject to inheritance tax. So I fully expect inheritance tax to continue to increase over the next few years. So what can you do? Well, make sure that your wills are reviewed and up to date. Make sure you have a will. Um, make sure the will is written in, a, in the most tax efficient way. Um, fully utilize all your inheritance tax allowances. So you've got annual exemptions of 3,000 pounds. You've got uh, your gifts out of income allowance. You've got your 250 pounds gifts to different people allowance. So just make sure that you're using your allowance um, every year. Make those gifts outright to family members where if you survive seven years, um, you would be, um, they, those assets would then fall outside your estate for inheritance tax purposes. If you're still looking for some sort of control over those assets, then consider trust planning, you know, gifting assets to trust for the ultimate benefit of your children. And don't forget business property relief investments, inheritance tax-free ISAs, where you're still owning those assets, they're still your assets to, uh, to do with whatever you want to do with them. Um, but after just two years, they would be inheritance tax free. So um, definitely if you've got inheritance tax issues, you're looking to plan around inheritance tax, uh, get in touch and we can take you through those potential solutions. As I mentioned, pensions, they didn't touch. So still all the tax reliefs around pensions still apply. Um, you can still get full rate tax relief on your um, higher rate of tax or your additional rate of tax. So. Definitely maximise your pension contributions. 
Um, just be aware, as I said, that there's a limit of 40,000, effective limit of 40,000 uh, per year that you can put into a plan. Um, and finally, social care. I just wanted to mention social care. If you've been following us over the last year, you'll know that there's a, there was a lot of potential um, proposed reform around social care. They were talking about the, the much um, vaunted cap, the 86,000 cap on eligible personal care costs, um, which was all going to be implemented in October 2023. Um, well, we haven't heard anything about this reform since then and in fact they've just abolished the health and social care levy which was going to pay for all these reforms and they've only announced that the implementation of anything has been put back to at the earliest October 2025 so um, it's all been kicked into the long grass yet again we've had a lost decade really of uh, nothing happening since the Dilnot report of 2010 so all really disappointing and I would um, not um, rely on government reform at all in this area so I would plan ahead. The panacea here is to plan ahead for social care, any potential costs that you have in the future. So get your wills done and get them done in a way that protects your assets for the family. Um, think about um, ring fencing assets through trusts or planning. Uh, allocating your investments in such a way that will protect your assets from future social care costs um, and have your investments ready to go for the future because I just wouldn't rely on government reform for the future. So that has been um, an overview there of some of the planning that you can do in light of the uh, recent changes to tax that were announced in the autumn statement. Um, if anything jumps out at you or you would like some advice around some of this financial planning, then don't hesitate to get in touch for a, an initial exploratory meeting with myself, all very relaxed um, in the office. You know where we are, we're in a, the High Street in West Brom Trim. I would be delighted to see you. Um, and if you have any questions after watching today's video, just send me a, a quick email or, or give me a call and I'll be delighted to answer them. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye, bye. -bye. bye.